balance training you can do at home that's actually beneficial and carries over to your time in the water. My name's Chris Mills with surfstrengthcoach.com. Check out the website if you haven't. Gonna give you a bunch of balance training ideas today that are actually beneficial. So the whole surf fitness craze, balance training has kind of become a funny thing that is more circusy than actually beneficial. So I'm gonna give you a brief bit of insight into what good balance training is. And if you wanna skip that, just fast forward to the video where I show you the exercises. So what is balance training, right? It's, it's the ability to maintain your center of gravity over a surface. And in our case, a surfboard is a moving surface. But a surfboard at speed is pretty stable, right? So you see a lot of stability ball stuff, which I'm a fan of when applied correctly. But you see a lot of balance training that is more surfacy and doesn't necessarily improve the equilibrium or proprioceptive requirements we actually need as surfers. So people are investing time in exercises that one, could be potentially dangerous, but two, don't really have an impact. So like I said, you're standing on top of a surfboard, that thing moving at speed is fairly stable, right? Where we need to be able to maintain our center of balance and regain our control and equilibrium is when we start going into maneuvers and start to lose it. Or for example, I'm walking the other day out of the shower, it's tiled floor, and I start to slip and I can catch myself, right? So think of, we were surfing a beach the other day, it'd been a couple weeks since I'd actually surfed since the COVID thing started, came up out of a front side turn, went too hard on the back foot, and the thing started to slip out from under me. And I was able to regain my center of balance over it. So regaining equilibrium, a tilting reflex essentially, of standing atop a moving surface and it starts to slide out, I'm able to regain. Or if you've ever had uh, a paddling or wind and sprays blowing up your face, you can't see. So sight is a big strong part of the vestibular system. Vestibular, helping to maintain balance, right? Riding reflexes, equilibrium reflexes. So in that scenario, you don't have sight coming in. And so all you're relying on is proprioception and motor pattern to be able to land that drop, right? So we do have balance requirements, but often in the realm of surf fitness, it kind of becomes gimmicky and silly. And most people very often, are their best entry point is just single leg work, which I'm gonna show you some today, some pistol squats, some single leg deadlifts, things of that nature, because that works on something called a riding reflex. And that's the ability to maintain your center of gravity over a stable surface a non-moving stable surface. So we need that. And again, a surfboard at speed is pretty stable. But we also have a need for tilting reflexes, and that is our ability to maintain our center of gravity and balance over a moving surface. So think of being on a skateboard. In fact, you doing work at home on a skateboard is a great idea. Also, I highly advise to surfers, start working on a slack line and play around on a slack line because A, it's a tilting reflex required because that is a moving surface, maintaining your center of gravity above that, but it does wonders for your kinesthetic awareness of your body. And a little tangent, a lot of elderly end up succumbing to some type of issue with a fall. So they fall, they break a hip, that then leads to infection or lack of movement, further surgeries, etc. So if we as a society would work towards better balance training and stay involved in aspects like that and play, you could do some big positive effects in long-term health. So with that tangent aside, get on a Carver skateboard, get on any skateboard, learn to balance on stability balls even and get on a slack line. So with all that said, we got riding reflexes, tilting reflexes. We need both as a surfer. We need to think critically about what we're doing and if it actually carries over. So without further ado, let's get into some movements you can work on at home that help improve your balance as a surfer. First up, we're gonna just start with the riding reflexes, which is our ability to maintain our center of gravity and balance over a stable surface. 
We're going to go after it with single leg work. Because you as a surfer need to be working on single leg work. This you know, out, because, you know, we're surfing, we're getting different hip positions, different pressures through the leg, and it's really beneficial for a lot of physiologic reasons, single leg training. So we're going to start with just a good old basic single leg deadlift. Can you do it well with body weight? Because it's hitting on mobility, strength, control. You can see this ankle going all over the place. This is the ankle I broke skating about two years ago. I actually still have, it's, it's not as good as my left. Most people can't even do this. They have problems balancing on a single leg, yet they want to go start hopping on stability balls and doing squats on stability balls. It makes no sense. And working on single leg deadlifts, oh, you can start training strength and power. So doing single leg deadlifts, I generally recommend anywhere from eight to 12 reps, depending on the strength parameters you're going after. But more than anything, focus on control and alignment. A couple quick tips. Non, or the non-stance leg, you wanna keep it straight, almost rigid, bit of glute tension, and drive the heel backwards, okay? So it's actually almost easier at first to have a bit of weight. These aren't that much, because it just gives me a little bit of counterbalance. And I'm reaching that heel backwards, keeping my femur, my thigh, in line with the torso. Cool. In this position, I do not drive the knee forward. That's become now quad dominant, more of a squat. I keep this hip pulled back, and we can achieve that by thinking of reaching this heel backwards. And then I start working on strength control of the hip as well as mobility of the hamstring. Really beneficial movement. To progress it, you just then start holding a weight in the opposite hand. This starts to add a rotational component, whereas you could add more weight if you're holding in both hands, but it's a little more stable. You can progress to one hand to come up. I drive the foot through the floor. Really great drill that works on strength, mobility, as well as balance. Variations of a strip squat or a pistol squat. Again, you're working on solid ground, learning how to control the body as well as develop mobility and strength. If you need to, use straps. You can hold onto a rope for this. So a strip squat effectively, or single leg squats, something along these lines, okay? You'll also see my oil if you follow strength and conditioning, talk about single leg squats, but to box. I use both variations depending on somebody's ability. The weights give a bit of counterbalance for this single leg squat to box. It's as if, I say single leg squat to box because if you've got a box in the gym, you think of bringing butt to the box. So that gets a little more hip involvement. More of this shrimp squat idea, the non-working knee comes to the floor, there's a lot more knee Involvement, so quadricep involvement, which isn't a bad thing, but you need really good range of motion through the ankle. Most people are restricted. They can't get their knee as far over the toes, so it's more relevant for them to go counterbalance, butt to box, or holding on to straps for a little bit of balance. So again, you can see the amount of proprioception and balance that's taking place. With my active athletes, what we'll work on, we'll get into the bottom position where they hold and they close their eyes. You can see I just got shakier, eyes are closed, drive up. So just taking the visual system out of that suddenly adds a huge balance requirement to that. And you're also working on good single leg work, strength, control, developing durability in the lower body, and helping the body to be able to move effectively and be aware of itself in space and how to maintain control of its limbs and still not working on silly balls and balance balls yet. So now let's get to some unstable surface work. And again, we do have a requirement for a tilting reflex. That's us controlling our center of mass and equilibrium over a moving object. But most people, at first, are generally better getting their balance work from stable ground. 
If you're an intermediate surfer, you have an ability to maintain your balance on a surfboard. Your balance isn't the biggest lap in your overall athleticism. But I am a fan of unstable surface work. It's gotten kind of bastardized in modern training because people don't necessarily apply legitimate protocols to it. Get on a skateboard. Not only are they fun in training multiple aspects of proprioception, coordination, balance, etc., but you can really start to work on skill. Starting to work on the rotation, the twisting, figuring out how rotation of eyes, head, shoulders, hands influences the rail. So again, not only is it fun, but there is some carryover to your time in the water. Take caution with this next exercise. I'm not responsible for you breaking yourself. Balance pipes. I got introduced to this by the work of Speed Sport, Rick Kirsten, legitimate training protocols. This is really working on intrinsic foot control as well as proprioception, right? And it's also likely having an effect on reflexes, the whole afferent and efferent information to the nervous system. So your body's ability to sense information and then immediately react. PVC pipes. It takes a while for me to get athletes to the point where they're really, really good with these. I'm on a yoga mat. You need to start with this on grass or in sand or with these cut in half. And we start doing work on top of PVC pipes. Because again, the amount of information processing going from foot to spinal cord to brain, this whole CNS system, my body, all the proprioception coming out of muscles, and the ligaments and tendons within the foot construct, right? There's a huge amount of information coming up and out to the nervous system. So, am I working on balance? Yeah. Am I working on my body's ability to sense itself in space and reorient and correct? Yeah, absolutely. Is it also influencing intrinsic foot control, which is hugely paramount for surfers? How mobile and how strong are your feet? toes, and ankles. And so we can start doing squats, we might catch a ball, toss a ball, we can start doing eyes closed positions. Again, you can develop certain characteristics with the athlete or yourself depending on what you want. But this is one unstable surface training tool that can be very beneficial if you do it safely. So again, let me reiterate, you need to start on sand or grass or half domes. And this might be way down the line for your training protocols. When we're working on this, we usually just go to a form falters. We might have somebody on pipes for up to a couple of minutes doing various drills. Really good drill. Start developing characteristics that help you react and respond and just move better and surf. So there you go, three exercises, all hitting various aspects of balance that will actually carry over to your athletic requirements as a surfer. If you're into this and you understand training and fitness and its relevance and how it supports you as a surfer for longevity, durability, and surfing skill performance, check out my Surf Athlete 12-week program. It's legit and it's an app. So again, thanks for checking me out. Thanks for checking the videos. Hope you dig it. Hope you can apply this. Hit me up with questions. The balance topic is huge and gets really misinterpreted in the world of surf fitness. So again, I hope you dig it. Stay safe, stay healthy, keep yourself fit, capable, and keep your training fun. I'm Chris, thank you.